Stuka Joe here, and today we will be playing a game of Origins of World War II, a game published in 1971 by the Avalon Hill Game Company and designed by the founder of SPI, the legend Jim Dunnigan. And this is a game for five players, and it deals with the power struggles in Europe leading up to World War II. And I was looking in Board Game Geek for a video of this game, and I was surprised to find none. And I found it had a very low rating, and that surprised me because I remember playing this game a lot in the mid 70s with my brothers, and I really enjoyed it. So I said, well, after 43 years since its publishing, it's never too late to make a video of this game. So we will be filming a full game, six turns, with a slight variation. I will be using a chit pull mechanism in order to uh, establish the order in which the countries or the powers place their political factors and resolve conflict. So that's the only variation I will use. Otherwise, we'll use the full rules. And uh, before starting to play the game, I will give you a brief explanation about the rules. So let's see how this game plays, Origins of World War II. To win in this game, a major power must have more victory points than the others, and these are scored by either obtaining an understanding with the country that is listed here, or controlling the country, like we have here a C, and uh, the power receives that number of points. Now, control and understanding are two different concepts. To control a country, a major power must be the sole occupant of the country and must have at least five political factors at the end of the turn there. And, for example, if Germany has five political factors in Czechoslovakia, the National Objecti Objectives Chart calls for a control of Czechoslovakia and three points for Germany. So, in that case, we remove the political factors and Germany establishes control of Czechoslovakia. Once a country is controlled by a major power, no other major powers can place units in that country. Another way of scoring victory points is through the use of understanding markers. To place an understanding marker in a given country or area, you have to consult first a national objectives chart to see if the chart calls for such an understanding marker. In this case, in Germany, the British can place an understanding marker there. If five political factors or more survive in the area at the end of the turn, you may substitute five political factors for an understanding marker there. And the effects of the understanding marker are profound. To illustrate that, we will place additional British political factors in the Rhineland, which is considered outside of Germany for game purposes. As long as the British have an understanding marker in Germany, the Germans cannot attack any British political factors outside of Germany, and that includes the Rhineland. So if the Germans would want to attack the British PFs in the Rhineland, they would have to first attack and eliminate the British understanding marker, which is always worth five political factors for the purposes of conflict determination. Now, we resolve conflict through the diplomatic conflict table. You compute the odds, and the possible results are D, defender eliminated, X, exchange, where the defender is eliminated and the attacker removes an equal number of political factors, the dash means no effect, and A means attacker elimination. So under one-to-one, -one, there is a big chance of the attacker being eliminated, and these attacks are very risky. Now, the rules of this game call for a strict order of sequence as to the powers in placing political factors and resolving the diplomatic conflict. Uh, so, uh, it is United States, France, Britain, Russia, and Germany. This game lends itself to diplomatic agreements by the countries in order to forestall other countries from going ahead early in the game, since uh, this game would be difficult to play in that sense solitaire, what I will do is I will incorporate a chit pool mechanic. I have here chits representing the various uh, powers and we will pull a chit to establish the order of placing political factors and also the diplomatic conflicts. 
we will use this display to keep track of the turns and also the political factors that each of the powers receive as well as a running score to see who's winning. At the beginning of the turn, we consult the political factor allocation chart to determine the number of political factors available to each of the major powers. Here you see the U.S. will receive two in turn one, France four, Britain eight, Russia six, and Germany 12. And the political factors will increase each turn. And you see here that always Germany receives more than everybody else. So this is the situation at the beginning of the first turn. And now we will draw a chit to determine which power will place its political factors first. And it is Russia. And Russia receives six political factors. You see here the objectives for Russia. Russia receives five if it controls the Baltic states. Four if control of Poland is obtained and three for Romania. And if it places an understanding in Germany, it receives six victory points. Placing political factors first is a big disadvantage in this game. So Russia will not commit all of its political factors. And what it will do is it will place a limited number of political factors in those countries where Germany can score points by controlling them. So one political factor is placed in Romania, another one in Poland, and a third one in the Baltic countries. Now, Russia will place the remaining three political factors in its home country. By doing so, Russia can move these political factors at a later turn. So it serves as a kind of reserve for political factors for use in later turns. Okay, the next power place its political factors is France. France receives four political factors. As you see for the French player, Alsace-Lorraine is a big deal. It's six points. And for that, the French player has to establish control. The, the French player has also a number of uh, countries where it receives few points. The next one would be Britain, if it establishes an understanding there with four points. The French only receive four political factors, which is not enough to establish control anywhere. So it will place three in Alsace-Lorraine and one in its home country for further use in the future. Okay, the next country drawn is the United States. And the United States only has two political factors in the first turn. The Americans score victory points in a different way than the other powers in the game. They score points at the end of the game if no understanding or control markers are present in a given country or region. Now, for this first turn, the Americans receive only two political factors, which is not much, and they have noticed that the Russians have placed scant numbers of political factors in those countries where the Germans can score points by controlling them, but they left Czechoslovakia and Austria empty. So the Americans place one political factor in Czechoslovakia and the other one in Austria, and in this way, the Germans will have to at least fight for these countries if they want to control them in this turn. The next country is Germany. And Germany receives 12 political factors in the first turn. As you see here, the Germans score the majority of their victory points by controlling other countries or regions. And that means eliminating the other powers' political factors there. The Rhineland is the most prized territory with five victory points. The Germans will place five in Rhineland and will also place five in their home country for use in a further turn. Meanwhile, to uh, negate Russia's placement in Poland in some way, they place one political factor there and one in the Baltic states. They know that Britain still has to uh, place its political factors, so they don't want to commit the bulk of their political factors because Britain can then place their political factors to frustrate any attacks. So now let's go to Britain's placement. Okay, the last marker is that for Britain. Britain has eight political factors. The British receive victory points solely by the placement of understanding markers in different areas or countries. You see here six if placed in France 
and five in the United States, and there are other areas like the Rhineland where the Germans have placed units where the British receive no victory points. So, if the British do nothing else, the Germans will gain control of the Rhineland, so Britain will place three political factors in the Rhineland, and its remaining five political factors will go to the United States in order to establish an understanding there. Now we go to the diplomatic conflict phase, where diplomatic attacks are resolved. We again place the randomizer chits in the cup, and we first resolve any attacks by France. France has no attacks to make because it has no uh, other major powers in the territories which it has political factors. Next, Great Britain. The British have political factors together with Germany in the Rhineland, but the British cannot attack the Germans because they have to have at least a one-to-one -one ratio. And in any event, a one-to-one -one attack is pretty risky anyway. Next country is the United States. The United States has uh, political factors in countries where nobody else has, so it will not attack. Next country is Russia. Russia has a political factor in each of the Baltic states and Poland, but Germany also has one, and a one-on-one -on -one attack is not a healthy proposition for the attacker, so Russia will pass and will not attack. Finally, the last chit is that for Germany. So Germany now resolves any conflicts. Germany has five political factors here. This would be a one-to-one -one attack, very risky, and the game is still early in its onset, so Germany will not attack here. The other areas where Germany could attack is the Baltic States and Poland, but it will elect not to do so. So that ends turn number one. And we check now for understanding or control markers. Britain has five political factors in the United States and its objectives call for an understanding marker there. So all five are removed and Britain obtains an understanding with the United States and Britain receives five victory points. No other understanding or control markers are placed at this time. At the end of the first turn, Britain has five victory points. The United States has 25, but this is kind of misleading. Remember, the United States receives points at the end of the game if no control or no understandings are placed in these countries. But we're just keeping a running score here. So they have 25 now, but you will see how this uh, American score will diminish dramatically during the next turns. So now we go to turn number two. In turn two, the Americans receive four political factors, the French six, the British 10, Russia eight, and Germany 16. Okay, we draw the first random chit, and Germany will place its political factors first in this turn. So it has a total of 16 political factors. Germany will place four in the Rhineland, bringing its total to nine there. It will also place five in Czechoslovakia, five in Austria, and it will place its remaining two here in Germany together with five that were in the previous turn to form a reserve there. The next country to place its political factors is France, and France receives six political factors. France places two political factors in Alsace-Lorraine, bringing its total there to five, which would allow them to have control if nobody else uh, places any uh, political factors there. And it has four remaining. It will place four in Great Britain and will move the political factor in France to Great Britain to have five there in the hopes of placing an understanding in that country. Next country is Great Britain, and Britain receives 10 political factors. Britain wants to make the Rhineland as costly to Germany as possible, so Germany has nine political factors there. If everything stays 
as it is, it will be a three to one attack, which is pretty good for Germany. So Britain's going to place two more political factors in Rhineland. So now it's nine to five or one to one. To make matters worse for Germany, Britain will place five political factors in Germany in order to obtain at the end of the turn an understanding that would prohibit Germany from attacking British political factors outside of Germany, including the Rhineland. And the remaining three political factors will be placed in Great Britain as a reserve for a future turn. Next is Russia, and Russia receives eight political factors. Russia can now take advantage of the German having to go first in the turn, and uh, it will reinforce its positions in the Baltic states and Poland. Places six, no, Russia places five political factors in the Baltic states, raising its total there to six, and places the remaining three in Poland, raising its total there to four, and now it will take its three political factors in Russia, you can break them down, and it will place two in Poland, raising its total also to six. Finally, it's the United States turn, and the United States receives four political factors. The United States, having observed the Russian move to take Poland and the Baltic states, uh, figures that if it doesn't do anything, the Russians will have a total of nine victory points in the second turn. And uh, that would put them ahead by a wide margin. So the United States, in its role as the spoiler in this game, what it will do is it will place its scant political factors. It receives four, two in Poland, and the other two in the Baltic states. So now if Russia wants to obtain control of the Baltic states, it would have to attack both. And here would be a two to one proposition as well as in Poland. The two to one table has only one chance of a defender eliminated, in which case the Russians would obtain control, but three chances of an exchange in which in case the Russian, Russians would lose three political factors, would have three political factors left, not enough to establish control. So now we establish the order for the diplomatic attacks. And the first country we will resolve attacks is Russia. Russia has to decide whether to attack in the Baltic states or Poland or not. It can attack all opposing political factors or uh, those of only one faction. And seeing the writing here on the wall, the Russians would have just a chance in six in each country to uh, obtain a control, uh, and it is 50% chance of an exchange. So Russia, what will do is it will attack here the German political factors. So this would be a six to one attack. The diplomatic conflict table has uh, the rightmost column is a five to one column, so we will roll a die on the five to one column. And the result is a five defender eliminated. So the Germans lose their political factor in Poland, but the Russians do not establish control of Poland because the U.S. has two political factors there. Now, in the Baltic states haven't seen the results of the Polish attack. The Russians will go for the whole uh, enchilada here, and they will attack both countries. And this would be six political factors against three, a two to one attack. And the result of this attack is five, no effect. So uh, the units stay where they are, and that's the end of the Russian conflict phase. Now we resolve the, resolve the attacks for France. And France has political factors in Britain, but no interest in attacking Britain it has five, the British have three, this would be a one-to-one -one attack, and uh, it will not attack. Next, resolve the political attacks by Britain. Britain has political factors here in Rhineland, and it is five compared to Germany's nine, so it cannot attack Germany because it doesn't have 
at least an equal number, and it has no interest of attacking Germany here, and it cannot either. Germany has seven, so Britain will not be attacking in this phase. Now, finally, Germany resolves any attacks. In the Rhineland, the Germans have nine, and the British have five political factors. This would be a one-to-one -one attack. Similarly, in Germany, the Germans have seven, and the British have five political factors, also a one-to-one -one attack. In this game, one-to-one -one attacks are extremely dangerous for the attacker, as we will show you from the diplomatic conflict table. There is a two-in-six chance of an attacker eliminated, as compared to a one-in-six chance of a defender eliminated result. So, the Germans will be attacking the Americans in Czechoslovakia and Austria at five to one odds, which gives them a better chance of controlling these two countries. First, we resolve the attack in Czechoslovakia. It's a five to one attack. And the result is five defender eliminated. So, the Americans are removed from Czechoslovakia, and that country will fall under the control of Germany in the next phase. Now we resolve the attack against the American political factors in Austria, five to one. And the result is four, also defender eliminated. So as in Czechoslovakia, the American political factor is removed and the Germans will control also Austria. Now we check for understandings and political control markers. We see here that uh, Great Britain has five political factors in Germany so it establishes an understanding with Germany and that is worth three points which added to the five the British have now increases their score to eight. France having five political factors in Alsace-Lorraine by themselves now have control of that region and that gives the French six victory points. The Germans are the sole occupants of Czechoslovakia and Austria, and they have five political factors in each country. So they obtain control in both. Germans receive three points for Czechoslovakia and four for Austria, for a total of seven. Finally, France has five political factors in Great Britain, just enough to place a French understanding marker there. That gives the French four, Victory points added to the six it already had, increasing their score to 10. With the understanding and control markers that we have placed this turn, the United States score goes down now to 15. At the end of turn number two, we see that the United States still leads with 15, but this score will continue to decrease. France has 10, Britain has eight, Germany seven, and Russia still has no victory points. Now we go to turn number three. We see here the allocation for this turn. The United States, six political factors. France, eight. Britain has 12. Russia, 10. And Germany, 20. Okay, we draw a chit to see who places its political factors first. And it is Germany again going first. Germany places six political factors in the Rhineland, increasing its total there to 15, which, compared to the British five, is a three-to-one attack unless the British send more PFs there. The Germans place eight political factors in Germany, increasing their total there to 15, to later attack the British understanding, which is worth five, in a three-to-one attack. Six political factors left. The Germans place five in Romania, and the remaining political factor is thrown in Poland to make life more difficult for the Russians there. And that is the end of the German placement. Next to place is the United States, and it has six political factors. The U.S. seeing Germany's intentions to try to control Romania throws three PFs in Romania, and in addition, having three PFs left places one in Poland, another one in the Baltic states, and the remaining political factor in its home country for future use. Next turn is for Russia, and Russia receives 10 political factors. 
The Russians have seen how other countries are placing political factors in their zone of interest, which is Romania, Poland, and the Baltic states. They receive 10 political factors in this turn, so Russia decides to throw them all into the Baltic states, so their total there reaches 16, and attack both Germany and the United States, who have four political factors in total, in a four to one attack, with the object of establishing control of the Baltic states in this turn. Next to place are the French, and the French receive eight political factors. The French want to keep Germany honest, so they place five political factors in Germany in order to try to obtain an understanding marker there at the end of the turn, and their remaining three will be placed in France for further use in the future. Finally, the last power to place its units is Great Britain, and Great Britain receives 12 political factors. The British place five in France, that would give them six uh, victory points for an understanding marker there. They also place five in Poland, which would give them an understanding in Poland. And the remaining two political factors will join the others in their home country. Now we go to the diplomatic attack phase. And we see who resolves diplomatic attacks first. First we have the United States. The United States has PFs in Romania, in Poland, and the Baltic states, but it, it is not in their interest to uh, make piecemeal attacks at one-to-one -to, -one to weaken their own position, so no attacks will be made by the U.S. Next is France. France will make no attacks either. Next. Germany. Germany has 15 political factors here. It cannot attack or should not attack both the British and French at the same time because it will be a one-on-one -on -one attack, so it can choose, and it will choose Britain. So it, this will be 15 uh, divided by 5. This is a 3-to-1 attack. Anything but a 6 will remove the British from Germany, and the result is 4 and exchange. So the British lose their understanding in Germany, which is worth five political factors, and the Germans remove five PFs. This lowers the British score by three points now to five, and because there's no understanding in Germany, it increases the U.S. score now to 17. With the elimination of the British understanding marker from Germany, now the Germans can attack British political factors everywhere. So they will attack the ones in the Rhineland. This is 15 against 5, 3 to 1. And the result of the attack is 5 and exchange. So the British are eliminated. They lose 5 political factors. And the Germans remove also 5. And they will have control of the Rhineland in the upcoming phase. So the Germans make no more attacks in this turn. Next is Russia. The Russians have 16 political factors in the Baltic states. Now they make their move. They will attack Germany and the United States combined. They have four. So it is a four to one attack. And the result of the attack is a six, which is an exchange. So Germany is eliminated as well as the United States. In total, this is four political factors. And the Russians lose also four, and they have a total of 12 remaining, so they will gain control of the Baltic states in the upcoming phase. The situation is quite different in Poland. The Russians have six political factors. They can't attack everybody. They can attack the Germans, and this would be a practically an automatic elimination. As to the British, it would be a one-to-one -one attack, which is very, very risky. The Americans have three political factors. It will be a two-to-one attack, but the prospects of an exchange, which is 50%, would leave the Russians very weakened. So they will attack the Germans. Five-to-one attack only has a one-in-six chance of an exchange, so the result is four defender eliminated. So Germany loses its political factor in Poland. 
and that's the end of the Russian attacks. Finally, we have Great Britain to resolve any political attacks. And Britain uh, could attack the French in its home country, but it will not do so, nor also here in France. Now we determine if any new control or understanding markers are placed. Britain places an understanding marker in France and it gains six victory points. Those six points increase the British score now to 11 and reduces the United States score to 15. Germany gains control of the Rhineland. The five victory points now increase Germany's score to 12 and further reduces the United States score by two points to 13. Britain with five political factors in Poland now establishes an understanding there. That increases the British score by three points so now it is 14. It does not decrease the United States score. Russia gains control of the Baltic states. This adds the first five victory points to the Russian score and it decreases the United States score by four points. And now the United States has nine victory points. Finally, France gains an understanding marker in Germany. So that understanding marker earns the French total of two victory points. So the French score now goes up to 12 and the American score decreases further to seven victory points. And at the end of the turn we see that the United Kingdom is ahead with 14. France and Germany are tied with 12 followed by the United States with seven and Russia with five. And that is the end of the third turn and we are halfway through the game.